Hi everyone, I'm Tally, this is Farrell, and we are bored of it, and welcome to our review of Solo 175. Now, this is going to be a fairly tough review because it's a game we both enjoy, but to quite different extents. There are some aspects that we feel quite differently about, some we feel the same about, but we can both agree it's definitely a game that deserves your attention. Solo 175 was a rather ambitious Kickstarter from a small publisher that went pretty under the radar, at least as far as we can see. So what is it? It's a Euro legacy style game, very much inspired by Orleans. The core gameplay mechanism is you're going to build a bag of workers, you can draw workers out of that bag, and then you're going to put them in little holes on your player board to take actions with them. It's for one to five players if you have the Kickstarter version like we do, or one to four players if you have the retail version. Now, important to note, that we are going to be showing b-roll in the rest of this review that will show some of the elements you can unlock but i mean they're all mechanistic it's not a story driven game so i don't really feel like there's any massive spoilers because it won't mean anything to you or you'll have already seen it but just be aware if that's something that bothers you You'll start a round of a solo 175 by drawing as many workers from your bag as you're allowed, uh, placing them like so, and then you will assign them to action spots. And each action to do will require one, two, or three workers, depending on the action. So once you're happy with how you've assigned your workers, you can then take the actions, which will occur in turn order. And to take an action, you'll remove your workers from the space and take that action. Many of the actions will allow you to recruit new workers, which will allow you to build up your bag. One of the things we really like about this is that each time you recruit a worker, they'll provide you with a different free bonus action. For example, when you recruit a pilot, you can then also move your ship for free. Other types of actions also include the trading action, where you'll be allowed to interact with one of the few different stores, each one selling different wares, and then the outpost action, where you'll be able to build and assign outposts onto the main map for the area control aspect. Eventually, you're going to end up with a lot of workers in your bag, so you'll begin to start doing the special actions, of which there are three. And these allow you to send your workers out onto the main board, which is a map of the solar system. Two of these actions will get you a token, which will hopefully be worth something in the end game scoring. And then the last action will allow you to vote in ongoing political elections with each political party doubling the VP worth of some aspect of the endgame scoring. Now we say hopefully be worth something because in an interesting twist, almost nothing you score for at the end of the game is worth anything at the start of the game. As you send these workers out to the main board, you're going to place them in special hubs. And these hubs will relate to distinct elements of scoring. The more workers in a hub, the more that element of scoring is worth. For example, if there are 10 workers in the zone one hub, this means whoever wins the area control battle for zone one will get 10 points. The game is going to end once a player has built all of their outposts, or if three types of workers have no more workers left, meaning players have recruited the entire supply. Then you're going to check the election, see who won the vote, which means an element of scoring is doubled. Then you'll calculate all the scoring for the different areas, which will change as you play through the campaign. There'll be more of them. And then whichever player has gained the most influence will win. Now we can't start the review without addressing the elephant in the room, which is Orlean, which is a classic Euro game, if you're not aware, and is actually rated one of the best. The reason we have to mention it is because many of the aspects of this game are wholesale copied from Orlean, with Orlean often doing things better. However, many of the other aspects of Solar 175 are wildly innovative and terrific fun, such as the fact you're all trying to rig an election to make the thing that you're doing best in worth double. We do think that if Solo 175 was just a base game, as is, you'd have some fun with it, it would be a novelty, but then you'd probably just go back to playing Orlean. The important distinction is, this is a legacy game, so you're constantly unlocking new little mechanisms, 
uh, game by game. And these are going to expand the scope and turn it into something that's exceptionally fun to play in its own right. Even if some of these early unlocks are, again, lifted wholesale from Orleans, looking at UNEDs. But what's great and what we find brilliant design is these additions to the game plane, a slot right in, it's very simple rules overhead, and importantly, they feel like they were always part of the game. Mm -hmm. You're never confused about something new coming in. It just expands the scope of the game in interesting ways, gives players strings to pull, gives strategies to pursue. And we've just had a really great time exploring everything that's come in and kind of developing the game to bigger and bigger levels without it feeling more complex. These unlocks are simpler additions, which means they're not shaking up the core gameplay in any significant way. And this means it's not the kind of game you want to play over and over in a short time. It's best to experience it once or twice every few weeks, get those unlocks, look forward to them, and keep coming back. And to be fair, this is actually my biggest criticism of all the ons personally, that I feel if I play it too much, I will get very bored of it very quickly. So I like to space it out. Now, one issue that comes in is early on in the campaign, the first five, six games, you're constantly getting unlocks, you're getting new stuff, you're getting new mechanisms to add in. It's all great content. Then suddenly this influx slows to almost non-existent because they tie future unlocks between achieving awards or doing multiple things before you get there. So when I talk about awards, at the end of every game, you're going to mark who had the most money, who had the most medal, who won zone one. And the first player to do this six or eight times, depending, will get an award. And that award will unlock something in the game. But considering player count and player ability, this could happen in six games, or it could happen in 26 games for a particular award. And obviously, nobody wants to play this 26 times without getting new content. I just think this would have shined as a succinct 10 to 12 game campaign. And it's going to be hurt in the long run by these unlocks coming so slowly after coming so quickly at the beginning. Moving on to the gameplay and what we like and don't like. You should know that we are huge fans of bag building as a mechanism in games and bag pulling. And in Solar 175, it's okay. It does not pop in the same way the bag building did in Orleans. And I'm sorry to keep comparing it to Orleans, but because there's such an obvious mechanistic influence, I can't not do it. And there are two main reasons it doesn't pop as well. First is the workers themselves. In Orleans, the workers were people. They had artwork and character and they were colorful. They had pizzazz. Here, they've been abstracted to little wooden tokens, which while very nicely made, just have a symbol on them. I have no connection to this besides recognizing that that symbol goes in that slot. No character. The second is that in Orleans, you had a greater variety of worker types to put into a greater number of actions on your player board to interact with a greater number of systems. It also was much harder to increase the number of workers you could draw out of your bag because it meant going down one specific track and that was a choice you had to make because Orleans has a limited number of turns. Here, within four rounds, you could maximize the number of workers you can draw out of the bag for the entire game. And because there are only really four or five worker types, you will almost certainly every pull see one of the ones that you need and it's just rare to get what you would call a bad pull. Thus, the bag building element just doesn't come together. I'm not feeling anything when I draw these out and I'm not worried about what will come out because I'll have a way to do what I want. You just don't get that moment you had in Orleans where you're going, please be a knight, please be a knight. Another area of gameplay that contributes to that problem is that there is not one route to do something. Players are allowed to choose different options to get to the same end destination. For example, if you want to move your ship, you could use a pilot and move your ship. Or maybe you didn't draw a pilot, so you use some other workers to recruit a pilot, and the bonus action for that is to move a ship. Now, this is some really sharp gameplay design, and we really think it's inspired the way that players can discover the systems of the game to become clever. There's different options to what you want to do, and it's very rare to be locked out of something because you got unlucky. But this does come at the expense of the core mechanism of the game, bag building and 
worker pulling to not be that exciting because you just don't really worry about what's going to come out. On a more positive note, the area control is really engaging. It's light and fun because you have so many outposts and they're relatively easy to build and get onto the board. This makes Solo 175 a far more interactive game than you'd expect because of these area control elements, the voting and the race for certain actions and limited components. Another interesting point is that the bases that you build are worth endgame scoring by themselves, but they also contribute to your area control presence, which we think is really clever. Another really interesting point of interaction is also the outpost actions, of which there are three, and they're represented by double-sided cards. Every time someone takes a outpost action, the double-sided card is flipped to reveal a similar but slightly different action. So this creates a lot of tension in the hopes that your opponents will flip the cards to the side that you need before the end of the round, and also a lot of woe, because if you take the outpost action and flip the card to the side that your opponents need, you could be giving them a bigger turn. In our opinion though, the best element of Solar 175 is the scoring. I love the element or the aspect of you having to work to make what you're doing worth something. I love that you're scrambling to stuff votes in the ballot box because something's going to be doubled and you want it to be what you've been doing. I love that you can be cheeky and move other people's outposts so they lose power in certain solar sectors, or that you can move workers around to alter the scoring of what things are worth mid-game to the detriment of other players. There's so much uncertainty and excitement, which you don't often get in Euros, and I've just had a great time experiencing that. There's a little bit of poker playing here, mind games, reading the other players, which you just don't get often in this type of game. But it's not that you're going to be blindsided because the game is readable enough. And if you keep a weather eye on what people are doing, you will be able to figure out probably what they're going for and either lean into it or try and stop them. And what's particularly interesting to me is there's a few games of this where Tally and I have had points or scores only one or two points apart. And obviously we haven't been doing the same things. We might not have scored the same for whatever was doubled. And it just shows that there are actually a lot of routes to go down and it can be competitive even if what was doubled isn't what you went for. There's ways around it. And I think that's quite clever and a good element of design that you have these options. Looking at player count, it plays great at two, but you'll likely get more out of the voting and area control elements at a higher player count. Although the game does allow you to shrink the size of the solar system to keep things tense at any player count. One thing we do find a little bit odd though is the end game conditions don't change depending on how many players you have because every single game we've played at two players has ended because somebody built all of their outposts because there's just a lot of workers. We do honestly feel like about five of each type of worker could be removed from the game so that the end game triggers are more equal. Let's delve into the production, world building and space requirements of Solo 175. It should be noted that this game demands a lot of table space, as can be seen by the size of our own table. The setup and teardown can also be a bit of a task. However, when it comes to the actual components, Solar 175 shines brilliantly. The miniatures are visually appealing, the wooden tokens are really great quality and very satisfying to handle, and the artwork is simply wonderful. So overall, a very impressive production from a relatively new publisher. However, one thing that does fall down for us is the rule book. The font, the format, and the layout could do with some improvement, and there are some spelling errors which detract a bit from the overall experience. Whilst the rulebook does provide the necessary information, it's just a bit cumbersome to reference, particularly when it comes to dealing with the multitude of unlockable game aspects. This aspect of the game is undeniably a bit disappointing and could have really benefited from the expertise of a professional copywriter. We've loved our time with Solo 175 and we're looking forward to playing more and seeing the content that we have yet to unlock we're pretty excited to see what it adds to the game. You know, this is a great legacy Euro game that has built upon some classics in interesting and novel ways and constantly expands itself. 
to where you have a lot of different options available to you. <laughs> Thanks, Fen. Uh, now, we do think some parts of this might rub some people up the wrong way, as we're pretty sure not everyone will be super pleased to lose a game by 60 points after they grafted their arse off the entire time, just because the vote didn't go their way. We're pretty sure others will have some other very valid criticisms of Solo 175, maybe finding it a bit dry or maybe not seeing some of the gameplay elements in the same way that we do. But we do think it's really important to stick with it, unlock the new gameplay elements and allow it to get better with time. So if you enjoyed this review, we'd really appreciate it if you could give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you're not already and please feel free to ask us anything about this game in the comments or let us know what you think if you've played it. Yeah, I think it's definitely got some rough edges, but we've had a great time playing it. Yeah. And it's definitely something that's very ambitious and is worth looking at if you see it around. Yep. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next Bye. time. Bye-bye.